Have you noticed how many of the flashlights available on the market today look so much the same? Yeah, there, there are a few variations, but by and large, they all have a very, very similar look. Well, that's the reason why when Flashlight Brand offered to send me the Mataminko FT-03, well, I guess you can see why I accepted. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unique looking like, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Flashlight Brand for sending me the Mataminko FT-03 so that I could share it with you. So as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light as well as this physical and performance specification and its modes of operation. And then we'll get outside and do some testing. All right, in full disclosure, uh, this is actually the FT-03 for Matamingo. The one I showed in the opening is an optional long tube version, which I'll bring back into the picture in a moment, but the standard flashlight is this one right here. Now, the other thing is this red version is a limited edition. There are only about 500 being made. I don't know how many of them are still available, but the standard version will come with a uncoated or unanodized aluminum. It's a silver look, so uh, again, still a little bit different than the traditional black anodized aluminum flashlights, but uh, it was just nice to have something different to test out, but I will tell you now before we even get into it, the performance is right up there with all the big names and all the other flashlights. In fact, this has performance features that seem to go beyond some of the other flashlights. So before we get any closer looking at this one, why don't I show you what it came with. So as I did mention, this is a special edition. So it came in, in a special edition box, which is always nice, but this is what the regular box will look like. Now inside of the box are a few items. First off, this is the tube that I had attached to the light a minute ago. And this is the battery that it comes with. It is a of 10,000 milliamp 211500 battery. So, I mean, it's a long battery. It is identical in size and not a performance necessarily to a 21700 battery, which is what the standard version runs off. So it is twice the length. However, Madame Mingo wants me to point out, of course, is that you cannot take two of the shorter batteries and put them in the tube. It will only work if you have this battery to go with it, even though it is virtually twice the size and twice the uh, amperage with 10,000 milliamps. The others are 5,000 milliamp hours. And this battery does come with this tube when you buy the kit. So this is an accessory kit that I'm sharing with you to get this long tube version. It's worth noting as well that the flashlight does not come with a battery. You'll need to purchase one. And they have, they have of course, their own batteries. And they have guidelines on what batteries they want you to use as well. Of course, all this information will be in the video description if you have an interest in hearing more about it. So again, let's just fi finish off what it came with. This is the extended tube for the battery. So we'll put that aside. Let's not forget, of course, the manual, the operating manual. Now, there's not a lot of information here. There's no warranty information here. That is on the website. If you're looking for more information than this little manual provides, then it does have the QR codes on the back that you can access and get more information from. Charging cable. Actually, quite a nice uh, USB Type-C charging cable. It's quite long. You can see I've got it coiled up. This is one of the braided cover ones. Um, just an extra nice touch. And, of course, a small bag with a few ex extras, like a lanyard, two spare O-rings, and a pocket clip. I'm not sure how I would use the pocket clip with the shape of that light, but it's nice to have that as well. I mean, let's put those things aside. And the last thing I want to bring into the picture before moving back to the light is this business card from Flashlight Brand. And the reason I do so is it's worth noting that if you can do your own review, not necessarily a YouTube review, but any type of review at all, and post it with that hashtag, they will give you 10% off on your next purchase. So just a nice little added bonus as well. All right, let's bring the flashlight back into the picture. So we'll go over the key features, then we'll break down into the physical performance specifications. So this has 
an impressive maximum output of 10,020 lumens. Yes, 10,020 lumens. When I turned it on, I could not believe just how bright it is. And as you can see from the size of that reflector, even though it is orange peel inside, um, it is still quite a thrower. It, in fact, I think it has 500 and some meters. I'll, I'll, I'll verify that in a moment. But my, my impression is this, this not only is a good thrower, but it has a lot of flood. So it's a nice combination, and uh, we'll get more into that in a minute. The uh, operating system, the user interface, is smooth ramping. So you start from its lowest. Now, I, here's the thing, as you'll hear me get, say again in a moment. I can tell you what the max output is of 10,020 lumens, but I can't tell you what the minimum output is because it's not listed. So, but it does have quite a low output. Output, as you'll see uh, inside and when we get it outside. Okay, let's move on to the physical specifications. Now, as far as the physical specifications for the FT-03, let's just go over the first, the head diameter, 2.54 inches or 64.5 millimeters. The battery tube is 1.14 inches or 29 millimeters. The overall length for this, the short version, is 5.5 inches or 141 millimeters. But if I put the long tube on, that would bump it up to 8.5 inches or 216.5 millimeters. The weight as it stands right now within the short version with the battery installed is 8.1 ounces, 232 grams. And again, if I put the long tube on and battery back inside, it'll bump up the weight to 11.3 ounces or 320 grams. It does have a waterproof rating of IPX6 and an impact resistance of 1 meter. Now, as far as the performance specifications, uh, as I mentioned, there's really not a lot I can tell you. I can tell you that it has a max output of 10,020 lumens. I can also tell you it has a beam cast of 587 meters with a candela of 86,400 but there's not much more I can tell you about the performance. But um, as you'll see, it, it does seem to go down low. I'm going to say under 10 lumens, which is, you know, quite, uh, quite acceptable. It does have a strobe and it does have a turbo setting. It's turbo that you get that max output on. All right, let's move now into the operation of the light. All right, what I really like about this light is just the simplicity of the operation. It's just a single press on and off with the switch right here. Oh, if I haven't mentioned this, I really like this switch. It is not really pronounced, but it is more so than on a lot of the lights that I have uh, tested lately. So I actually have no problem finding that with my fingers or my thumb in this case when I'm using it outdoors. So it's it's indexes quite well. Even with my gloves on, I can still find and operate that button, which is a nice plus for this design. All right, so back to the operation. So it's just a simple on and off. Now I have that set at high and it's uh, causing the camera to adjust. So let me just press the button, what you'll see. All right, so that is high. If I hold the button down very quickly, it ramps down to its lowest and you can see that it uh, flashed again to tell me it's, it's at its lowest. So you can see that's pretty I don't know. I'm thinking five, maybe at the most 10 lumens at the lowest. It's just my guess. So uh, that's my best guess, of course. And if I hold the button again, it will flash to tell me it's, well, it's going to go up to the highest lumen setting and then flash to tell me it's there. Whether the light is on or off, if I double tap the button, it goes to turbo. That is bright, right? Okay. And turn it off. Whether it's on or off, if I triple tap, it will go to strobe. If I do it correctly, of course. There we go, that's better. All right, as I give you some close-ups of the FT-03, I'll talk about a few of the other features. So one of the things I'm finding is that there's not great information in the manual itself. Some of the things about this light I discovered on my own, and I just can't verify how they work necessarily. But first, let's just give you some close-ups. So there is the battery port cover for the USB Type-C It's a charging port. It's quite deep in the body of the light, and it seems to be well protected here. There is this small rotating lanyard attachment. It's gold. It's nice accents to the red. It's different. It's it's not a deal breaker, but I, I just find it a little bit annoying. It does not come off unless, of course, you make it come off. Um, yeah, so those are just a couple of the close-ups of the light. So here are some of the features, and for whatever reason right now, <laughs> I can't make it work. And that is the LED inside of the on-off switch 
remains on in blue as long as there is a battery status or a good amount of battery charge. The light is red while it is charging, changing to blue when it is fully charged, and remains blue on the light unless, of course, you do this, which is to turn the tail cap just a little tiny bit, like a sixteenth of a turn, and then it disengages the battery. It's kind of like a physical lockout. Um, but whatever I did in pressing the button sequence, and I can't figure out how, it has gone out and not come back. I don't see that as an issue. It was one of those things that I wasn't uh, opposed to. It's just that, uh, uh, yeah, if you have this next to your bed stand somewhere, maybe you don't want to see that blue light going all night. So I was just keeping it turned like that. But now I can't bring it back. I think it has an electronic lockout. I say that because if I quad press the button, one, two, three, four. No, not like that. One, two, three, four. It'll flash four times, but the light comes back on. Two presses, mind you. First press just gives it a flash, and then the next press turns the light on. If that's an electronic lockout, I wouldn't call that a very effective one. Uh, for me, the best form of lockout is this physical one where you, that's it. That's all you have to do, and then the, the light's not coming on at all. You just have to remember that you did that. Okay, so those are the close-ups of this light. I think uh, it's time to move outside. All right, I haven't gone over the information I have for the FT-03, such as it is, and I know there are some gaps. Um, we can at least get outside and do some testing with it. All right, we're doing some nighttime testing for the Mataminko FT-03. I am in my backyard. I'm going to turn the flashlight on low. And it's reaching across my yard to through to the neighbor's yard to the garage uh, two doors up, but it's not really, really bright. Let's take it up. Now, I'm taking it up through the ramping. That's low, working my way all the way up to high. It'll flash. All right, and you can see at the highest level, and this is not turbo, I'll turn that on in a second, that I've already totally illuminate not only my backyard, the neighbor's backyard, the third yard up, and as far as I can see, three or four more doors up. But uh, let's just take it up to turbo. It doesn't appear to be a lot brighter, but it is. And uh, yeah, this has a very nicely defined central hotspot with a whole lot of flood. So quite an effective light. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Mataminko FT-03. So right off of the top, what do I really like about this light? It's a unique appearance, honestly. That's one of the reasons I accepted this light. Beyond that, of course, was the performance and what it was capable of and the value that it has. But it was its appearance. The fact that this was red was a nice extra, but I would have liked to have had the silver version just as much. Uh, yeah, it looks unique in that size. It looks even more unique when you put the extender battery tube on it. Yeah, it's just kind of Unique, I guess that we can say that about it. Now, here's something I just want to say about the appearances. When I looked at it when it arrived, I thought, that's skinny. That seems to be very thin through here. Then I compared it against a few other flashlights that I have that use the same size battery, the 21700 size battery. It's the same tube diameter. It's, it's virtually the same. It just looks small in relation to the size of the head and reflector on top. That's even accentuated when you put the long tube on. It just looks long and narrow, almost old school, like an old a C, D, C cell battery flashlight that security guards or police officers might have carried at one time, one with like three or four cells. Kind of reminded me of that as well. Uh, yeah, okay, so what else do I like about this? It's got great lighting, it really does. At turbo with the uh, 10,020 lumens, this thing really reaches out there. Now the light does have a distinct hotspot in the center that reaches out a good long distance, 500 meters, 587 meters, I believe it is, but it has a lot of floodlight, and that's, of course, due to the design of the reflector. So if you like that type of performance, this one really does have it. I like the operating system. Very simple, just on, off, ramp it up, ramp it down, stop wherever you feel you like that lighting. Uh, yeah, it's a good system. What do I not like about it? It's nothing really physical about the light. It's the lack of information that was provided. I don't know where I'm going to find that information. Maybe you can help me with that. But I can tell you that in turbo, it has 10,020 lumens. But I cannot tell you what it has at its lowest setting or anywhere in between. The other thing I can't tell you is um, the run times at turbo or any other setting. 
oftentimes when a, a flashlight has that ramping low to high to turbo, it'll give me exactly that. The run times at the lowest setting, the run times at high, and the run times at turbo. This one did not provide that information. That's a bit annoying. Uh, I don't see any reason why this won't do well for itself, but you know, I, the performance so far, as long as I've had it, has been spot on, so I can't complain about the run times. I suspect it has to do with the quality of the battery as much as anything else. Speaking of batteries, what I wondered when I first got the light is having that extended tube and that long battery, if that was going to change the performance. Well, the only thing that it changes is the runtime. It doesn't change the lumen outputs at all. That's dictated by the LED and the circuitry inside. You just get double run times, presumably double run times because it's a 10,000 milliamp battery, milliamp hour battery, as opposed to the standard, which is a 5,000 milliamp battery, milliamp hour battery. I keep saying that. Okay. So it's just the lack of information that came with this light that I found a little bit annoying. Now, very small thing and very personal is this little lanyard, lanyard attachment point that rotates around. It's a nice contrasting color, but it bugs me when I hold it in my hand. So, um, well, I can take care of that myself, can't I? Okay, that's everything I have to give you on this light. I will put all the information I have in the video description below, including the links to where you can purchase this from Flashlight Brand and the technical information. If you have any information that I don't have that you would like to share, please put that in the comments section below this video. If you have any questions, put those in the comments section below this video. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.